When I got out of high school, I tried to join the army, and it's like, Ricky, we're sorry, you're already all you can be. <laughs> you know, like, and I'm like, I'm like, all right. Well, and then I tried to go to college. I went for two days, and I look at these people. I'm like, I don't want to be like you. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Blue Collar Boardroom. I've got a special guest for us, Ricky Hanks. What's up, Ricky? How you doing, man? Man, it's all good, man. It's all good in the hood. We're here to serve, and. Uh, we have a special affinity in our hearts for uh, blue collars, you know, guys that work hard. Ricky's a second generation uh, a contractor like myself. He's been doing this a really, really long time. And, you know, we're going to get deep into the dark side of being a contractor. You know, if you're out here and you're trying to grow your contracting business fast, you see all this stuff on the Internet. You know, Internet's littered with quick fix magic pill solutions. Me and Ricky were just talking about the time that, you, you, you know, a consultant comes through and says, I got this magic sales training for you. I got this magic pill solution. You know, um, typically, what's your thoughts when it comes to consultants? Ooh, like my experience or my thoughts? Yeah, both. <laughs> okay, let's talk about my experiences. My very first experience, I read a book called, um, let's just not name the book. It's a green cover. If you can figure out a green book called about like something about, about roofing industry. I read this book and it was like this dude was hiding in my closet, like no shit. I read this book and I'm like, this guy has got to be hiding in my closet. So I hired a private investigator. I'm like, go find this guy. I've got to meet him. So I, this guy went and found him and he thinks I'm, I, this guy thinks he did such a good thing in my life for finding this guy. It really only got me two work comp claims uh, showing up in labor court from hiring consultants, right? But anyways, it's all my fault. I take responsibility. We'll talk about that later. So I read this book and it, like this dude was hired in my closet, but it turns out this dude never owned a roofing company. Yeah. He was just a sales guy. Yeah. He was a sales guy that he tried, I think for like six or seven months, he owned his roof, own roofing company. Mm -hmm. And he came up with this whole great idea about how everybody should, you know, run their roofing company. Well, I read the book. I believed it. It was a good idea. Oh, man, it sounded fucking great. But here's the thing. It put like, I had 25 sales guys at the time. I was 27 years old. I had five sales guys in five offices. And I thought I was doing really cool. And basically what this book did was ruin my, <laughs> ruin my entire business, you know. And uh, it, it was, I mean, it had a lot of good theories and it had a lot of good practices, but it, it had nobody that was responsible at the end of the day. And there's got to be one person responsible for the customer satisfaction, the customer journey. You've got sales guys bringing the deal to the table, but then boom, down set, hut. There's, a, there's that? an epidemic out there. It's not just in our space. It's in all entrepreneur space. There's people that don't have real results. There's young people that are just learning about how to be a digital marketer. Now they're offering you how to get leads. There's uh, contracting coaches that have never built a business or they've failed every business they've been on. So then they start coaching. There's, you know, this check this out. If you are at a bar and somebody asks you what you do and you tell them you're a life coach, I promise you one out of two people will tell you that is what they do. <laughs> one out of two people. If they ask you first, what do you do? And you say, I'm a life coach. One out of two will say you do. I've got the stats. I've got the books. I've got the journal. I've been keeping it track for a while. So like, it's just... well, we, we, well, I'll tell you one thing. It's, it, it is a growing industry. There's more and more of the world that is getting their information through YouTube, through podcasts. And it's a great thing. All this in, uh, information is available to you at the fingertips. You just have to kind of have a warning buyer beware sticker that you that you really do have to check out your source. And, you know, me and Ricky are both brick and mortar business owners and have been for close to 20 years. And, you know, uh, we started with word of mouth referrals and direct sales, knocking on doors. And, you know, there's a certain uh, way that you learn how to like sell and overcome objection when you have to go cold call or knock a door. There's two ways you can learn. You can learn from someone else mm -hmm. who's already set the path. This is what you do. This is how you do it. Or you can figure it out on your own. Yeah, there's two ways to do it. So, you know, what, what we're smart. talking about, though, was, is that both of us have had ups and downs in the roofing business. Um, there's times where, you know, you can sell, but I'm naturally an ADD guy. I'm naturally not an organized guy. I'm kind of a free thinker, a free doer, and if it feels good, I will give it a shot. And that's got me in trouble a lot of times. <laughs> and so, you know, what's happened in times is, like, I've outspent our budget. I've... I've, I've you know, depleted the cash flow. I couldn't, you know, pay the supply company bill. I, uh, I've had to ask people for money in the past, and 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 you know, that's just the beginning of it. I've had my best friends start their own companies. I've had, you know, people that 
you know, really are near and dear to my heart, you know, do me completely wrong. And, you know, there's been times in my life where I made the wrong decision and I can never forget. I was telling you a story that, you know, there's a, there's a, there's an epidemic in contracting where everybody that wants to be a part of a team, but also wants to create their own thing. And there's a, there's a weird fine line there because, you know, in our business, we might share our profits and we are very generous. Both me and Ricky share a large percentage of our profits where our salespeople take all the risk, all they do is sell, they make a large profit. And sometimes we give them cars and trucks and things. And, and we love them. And we love them. And we, and we mentor them. And, and sometimes these guys, they decide to step out and uh, sell a project under their own name, keep cash from a customer, charge something to our account that they doesn't deserve. And, and it's like biting the hand that feeds you. And I'll never forget the time that I did that. I was 19 years old. I was working for my uncle's, uh, my dad's best friend, and uh, he had given me a uh, draw. He'd given me money. He he taught me how to measure a roof at the age of 14 years old. Um, and, you know, he's not here today, but basically I went and paid cash for some materials when, you know, I was working for his company supposed to be exclusively because I'd sold this job and I wanted to keep all the money instead of split it. And I'll never forget the disappointment and humiliation I felt when he called me and said, why are you buying materials cash? You know, it was, it was humiliating because I I'd, I'd, I'd bit the hand that feed, fed me. I knew it was about to cost me a lot of money. And I was embarrassed about the decision and about the fact that my ethics didn't align with the person that I thought I was. So can, can we find out, can we go back to Lee at 14 years old and find out why he made that decision? Like why he thought it was the best decision? Well, at 14 years old, I was working for my dad's company, and now I'm, I'm working for one of his friends because my dad, he built a software, and his roofing company wasn't that successful. And so I guess I thought, you know, I was going to build my own roofing company and I didn't need to work for my dad's friend. And I had this entitled, you know, like attitude and really I had no idea what it meant to take the risk. I had no idea what it meant to provide, you know, uh, not just a place to sell, but a place to like really build. And, and, you know, I took it for granted and, you know, I, I was, I was 19 years old and so I was a young kid and I made a, I mean, I was completely sober when I, when I made this decision and I can just remember like, uh, that the decision cost me probably about a hundred thousand dollars. And you know, the reason why I ask you that is because like me, I've decided to take responsibility for when people do that to me, like it's my fault. I didn't do something right. And not everybody that's in my life agrees with that decision, but I, I, I made two decisions this year that have been the best decision of my life. One is to be fully present. Mm -hmm. Like, if I'm here, don't try to be there. If I'm on this appointment, be at this appointment. If I'm with my wife, be with my wife. If I'm with my buddies, be with my buddies. But be there. Own your space. And the second one is to take responsibility for everything. And as I'm on that journey of responsibility, it fucking sucks. <laughs> I'm just not going to lie. It does. Like, But if, if somebody does something wrong, it's not their fault. It's my fault. And when you look at things from that perspective... It's kind of like what Michael Jackson said, right? If you want to change the world, look in the mirror and change, right? And that's what we got to do is change because if we can get to you where, where you were at 19 years old and figure out what you were thinking, what it was that thought you should do that because you're, you're no different at 19 than these guys are at 27. I'll tell you what I was thinking. I would get right to the mindset. I was thinking I'm out here knocking the doors, creating the leads, managing the projects. What's this guy doing for me? I'm creating all the business. I deserve to make more of the money. He's sitting back. He's not doing the work. And I got jealous. I got resentful. And I was counting other people's money is what I was doing. And, you know, I did sign a contract that said I wouldn't do that. And I did know it was wrong. And I did get caught. So it cost me money. And so, you know, I'm going to say, like, my uncle, he taught me. He's like, Lee, there's only three things you need to do to grow your roofing business. Now, my uncle had a business that was doing $90 million a year. And he was a guy who had, you know, thousands of people that he impacted in his life. And he said, if you want to grow your roofing business, you need more salespeople. A commission-based salesperson that can generate his own leads, close his own deals is invaluable. And the average salesperson probably sells about 300000 a year. So if you want a $30 million roofing company, you probably got to recruit about 100 people. Okay, not all of them are going to stick. The good ones are going to average with the, with, the, with the bad ones. And in, the, in between, you're going to get 300000 in sales. Number two, he said, you got to turn salespeople into leaders. You got you to mold these men. The training is very, very important. The mentorship is very, very important. The personal development is very, very important. He said the third and most important thing is sometimes you got to make an example out of a motherfucker. And sometimes, you know, you, you, you meet a, the, my man Jocko, who was a SEAL team captain, he said, 
Your standards are what you tolerate, and there's no such thing as bad teams, only bad leaders. And so, so, so take that for instance. There's only there's no bad teams. There's only bad leaders, and that's what I've decided to live by. And so, talk to me a little bit about this. The, the, you've had your some a lot of success. So, t- t- walk me through your story. I'm more interested in the struggle, but but talk to me a little bit about the success of how you got a roofing company to 10 million by the time of 27. I, my first time I did 10 million, I was about the same age. It's really rare. A eight figure contracting company is, is really hard to build and to build one before the age of 30 is a heck of accomplishment. And, and it's harder to do when you find out when, after the storm, you owe $3 million <laughs> after what? the storm. So what happened? Oh man, what happened? You hire the wrong consultants. <laughs> you don't watch your money. You have no checks and balances. You know, you don't have a thing called a PO and you don't have all these things that regulate or govern what you do, say, or think. Yeah. You know, you just you just out there on a whim. You're just going for it. You're Ricky fucking Hanks. Ricky you know, Bobby, baby. <laughs> yeah, like, you know what? If you're not first, you're last. You know, and it was just like full steam ahead. And I used to run everywhere I go. And people say, Ricky, who's running your business? I say, we're not. We're just walking. <laughs> we're just taking a walk because I realize when you're running, you get tired. And because you can see the vision and you can see the prize does not mean everybody behind you can. So our job as the leader is to paint the vision, paint the prize, make sure the prize is tangible, make sure it's the best prize that they want, you know, because our prize is not their prize. But if if we're out running so fast and we know why we're going, but and we know there's cash flow issues and they know there's cash flow issues, <laughs> they know there's not enough money in the bank to pay the bills. They know all the same stuff that we know, but we can keep going because we know the prize. Our first job is to paint the vision. Ricky, on that painting note brought me this wonderful painting. He came to my mastermind, and he said, dude, you're not a roofer, and uh, I'm going to put this up right on the wall here on the Blue Collar Boardroom, but I want to return to you a gift, my man. Hey, and, and, and I'm going to tell, tell everybody this right now. I went there with the intent, like, I don't like Lee. <laughs> okay? <laughs> like, my friend Harvey Cohen was like, hey, you want to come to this conference? I was like, sure. And then I went to, I heard Lee speak in the morning, and I told Harvey, I was like, Oh, my God, I'm coming back to hear this guy every time he speaks because this guy was prepared, he was ready, and he showed up. And, and I told him right there, I was like, this guy's not a leader. He's not a roofer. He's a leader, and he's, he's crafted in his mouth. And the picture is somebody catching a diamond with their mouth. But he crafted a skill of saying the right thing at the right time. And, like, I mean, you can never take nothing back you say. Once you say it, it's forever said. It's, you know, they say you, sticks and stones can break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Words will make you who you are or they'll make you who you're not. The man with the best message wins. And uh, I want to give you this book. I'm taking it off my bookshelf. I'm going to send it over to you this way. This book's called Profit First. This book changed my life. And the principle in this book talks about, you know, a lot of things that contractors fail at. Oh, we're going to cause some more things to fall down. But contractors fail because just like, you know, when there's a lot of food on your plate, you're going to eat the whole plate. You're going to eat everything on the plate. And a lot of diets out there, what they do is, they don't just minimize what you eat. They, they minimize the portions that you eat. And so it, by putting less food on the plate, you actually can, you know, uh, feel, feel like you're fulfilled if you take your time while eating it and you just have less food on your plate. And so that goes back to walking a business, not running one. Yeah. So in this book, you know, I also had those problems. There was a time where I was a million dollars in debt and I had to uh, start the, the, the treacherous walk back up the mountain. And Dude, have you ever had to give a speech about being successful? Why you, like, you got to make payroll in two days and don't where the money's coming Dude, from? Yes, I have. As a matter of fact, uh, I I've had many of those moments where I, I had to have faith in God. I'm going to be real. Oh like, man, come on. Th- th- Part the Red Sea, baby. Let me, let me tell you, I was in church, uh, the time that, that, that I really needed this book the most because, you know, my accounts, my sh- credit lines had got shut down. I had all the opportunity in the world. I had a whole world looking at me. And, you know, what I wasn't doing is I wasn't collecting my money fast enough. More importantly, I, I, I got undisciplined to collecting first checks on my jobs. And um, it was a recipe for failure because I was spending more than I was collecting. And what I what that I that is an ass whooping waiting to come. <laughs> and what I started doing was I started, you know, putting my money into five different bank accounts. That's what this book talks about. It talks about giving yourself a fair wage. It's like if you have a $10 million business, you don't really have a $10 million business if you're a contractor. You have material and labor that costs $6 million, and you have profit of, let's say, $4 million. So let's say you got a $4 million business. And now you still got to pay 
all the overhead expenses to the sales reps. You got to pay all the stuff out. Okay, of your so office. you're not talking about like no. Okay, I'm just saying okay. I was your like, real revenue is not 10 million. Your real revenue is minus the material and labor because that's just coming right off the top of your dollars. Wow. And so if you look at what a four million dollar business is supposed to pay the pay themselves as an owner, a lot of times roofing contractor owners don't pay themselves a fair salary. They, they, they may take money here and there. They may spend all kinds of like extra stuff out of their bank account. But I'm talking about pay yourself a fair wage. And then what percentage are you supposed to take out of every check to ensure that you have a profit so that you can man manage your overhead expense? This, th there's an equation that we have wrong. It's sales minus expenses equals profit. That's the thing we've been told our entire life. When really what it is is that sales minus, you know, actually if you have profit, and you have minus sales equals expenses. And what that means is, is that, you know, you take your profit first, what's left you have to work with. And if you can't afford it, then you got to get rid of it. And a lot of times that's the, the, the hard question that roofing contractors have a problem with or any contractor. Should I spend this money on home advisors? Should I spend this money on leads? Should I give this guy a draw? Should I advertise on TV? Should I get this billboard? You know, Ricky, you talked to me a little bit before we got on the show about, um, you know, going door to door selling roofs and how you're in Oklahoma and everybody went door to door selling roofs and you wanted to differentiate in the marketplace. And so how did you differentiate in the marketplace? This is when I got to give a shout out to my friend, Steve Green, Dr. Steve Green. I mean, I could say so many things about him, but my favorite thing is that he loved a Ricky. <laughs> That's my favorite things about a lot of people is just loving Ricky. And, you know, one of the things that Dr. Green did was he came up with just all kinds of things. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to tell his story, but you know, he taught me so many things about like building your personal brand, about becoming, you know, the 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 market what leader. It, no, not even the market leader, but the what is it called that he said here? Give me one second. He said, "Become the like, help me out here. You can think of it, but like, become the ex expert, right? Like, build enough content. Content is king. Become the expert, so there's nobody else to call but you." And so you're spending money on TV. See, this is when I first saw you. I saw some of your TV advertisements. I saw some of the stuff that you were putting out. Um, and I said, wow, this guy's really good on camera. And, you know, one of your sales guys or production guys has been following me a long time. And, you know, I figured there was some synergy. But contractors, you know, especially ones that can sell, that know how to market, you know, we're real guarded because there's a lot of people that don't do what we do. They don't deal with the real expense. They don't deal with the real people. How many people have come through your doors? Have you trained as a roofing contractor? Oh my goodness. Like how many are millionaires or how many still love me or how many hate me? I mean, <laughs> like how we, how we, the whole it? point, there's a lot, there's a lot, a lot of motherfuckers. Listen, and Lee, I used to do, I used to do interviews and I would have 150 people come into a uh, best Western or a holiday Inn or nicer hotel than that, like the Hilton or something mm -hmm. like that. And they would all come there and they wouldn't know what they were. They wouldn't know why they were there. And I would have, just like we did today, I would have these people telling their stories about how Ricky changed their life and how they had $38 in their pocket. And I would put them all at a table. And I would say, listen, you might not get this job today, but you know five people that need a roof or we can expect their roof. If you can give me five people and get their contact information, I'll give you $25 today. First time you've ever been paid on a job interview. You might not get this job. You might want this job because it turns out we're only going to hire the best people. But you can leave a job interview with money today. Can you give us some phone, some names and numbers? And so that is actually like a part of the system that I teach, network marketing inside of the recruiting system. A lot of contractors' biggest challenge is they want to hire top talent. There's a stigma associated with being a contractor. Me and Ricky are both dedicated to raise the status of contractors. Ricky owns a 72-foot yacht. He's got a beautiful million-dollar property here in Naples, Florida. He's got trucks. He's got a beautiful wife. And a lot of people want to trade spots with you, you know? Oh, shit, really? You know, and, 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 the, and the truth is, is like they don't understand the work that it takes to get there, the risk it takes to get there. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of people out there are, 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 are after, you know, the, uh, the pictures. They, 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 they see what, what's the other side of that? You know, we talked a little bit about the struggle. Um, but, you know, the other side of that is, is that we, impact people's lives we're fish i have this this right here is a, a a bracelet it's a fisherman and men bracelet and you know that's that's what we are and you know we create a, a a facebook hiring event for companies and 
we use video content to drive people to that event, and we ask their salespeople to give us five names, and we are starting to you know show people how they can get paid in their and their first day at work. And so there's a lot of synergy here with with how we recruit. And the only difference is is that Ricky was doing it, you know, without social media and just with a little twitch, with a little just like a little turn on your own strategy. I'm gonna bring to life something that you already been really, really successful at. And you know what? That's why I always tell people my favorite part about life is people. Yeah. You know, like when you got the right people in the room, people that make you feel special, people that make you feel loved, it elevates you to the next level. You know, because when you feel like other people believe in you, even though you don't need them to, it gives you the courage or the faith or the strength or whatever it is to like do more. That's why Jesus sent out people two by two, not by themselves, because he wanted people to see two people loving each other. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like when you see two people in love, and that doesn't mean I'm like anything weird. It just means like, hey, dude, I like you. Yeah. You like me. Like, I love you. I love you. And yeah. love love won't do no wrong, dude. And that's always been my standard. Well, that's why I do the love. Sky Diamonds, bro. Because like when I was a kid, um, I went into a roofing sales office. I saw the camaraderie of roofing sales guys. See, my dad, he was like a, my mom divorced him. He was a guy that was a car sales guy. And mine too. And basically, you know, he partied a little bit too much and, and got caught up and, and got kicked out on the street. And you now I saw him change and, you know, dedicate himself to building a business, impact a lot of people's lives. He had a team of 15 sales guys. I'm like 12, 13 years old. And I'm, I'm listening to their conversations in the office. And there is like a football locker room mentality. It's almost like we're a band of brothers. We got each other's backs. We're all here on a mission to create financial freedom. We all want to go inside of someone's home and get them to buy our, our services. Each sale that we make, it contributes to the entire team's results. And there's just a vibe and energy of roofers helping roofers or contractors helping contractors. And that's one of the things I love most about Owning a contracting business this is a camaraderie in the in the sales team, but it's also one of the things I love most about coaching contractors. So when you talk about that that love, I love facilitating success for blue collar entrepreneurs. I, I'll I'll do it for free. You know what I mean? I you don't, did it today. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I did. Today. Didn't I appreciate I? that. I did, didn't I? You did. We went out there and made some video content. You did. I appreciate that. Yeah, you got it. But you know the deal is is that you know it's a drop in the bucket. And if you add value, the world will add value back. Amen. And, you know, I do believe in the power of karma. And I'm a strong believer in, you know, it's, you get what you put into the world when you work for it and when you really feel your future, when you really take ownership of your future, when you really, like, own it. When you talk about owning your space. I like to say it like this, right here all the time. Say right here all the time. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then when someone make fun of me, I'll go, ha, 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 ha. Say, ha, 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 You know what I mean? That's just a little melody I played inside of my head to tune everything else out. Yeah. Because that's what we got to do, right? We well, got to tune it all out. See, the thing is, is like we tune things out and we go out and we, we become fishermen and men first. That's part of the reasons why we've been successful. I can tell both of us. You know, so our uh, contractor, they, they start by working on the job site or they're a good roofing salesman. And they want to build a great roofing business or they want to build a great contracting business. And they're either good at sales or they're good at the work. You know what they're not good at? They're not good at being an entrepreneur and they're not good at recruiting men. So tell me, like when you are trying to get somebody into the business and then you're trying to facilitate their success, give me your secret sauce of how that all works. Who's now I'm going to take a shot of Ricky's vodka here. He secret, secret sauce. Toast. Vodka toast. with coconut water. We're going to toast to your Man, secret I sauce. Man, I tell you what, there's always something to toast to, to life, to love, to us. That's what it says on the bottle. And I think really my secret sauce is what I, what I try to keep in the bottle, and that is Ricky, you know, because like I spent my whole life trying to work myself out of a job, right? That's what you, that's what you learn as trying to be an entrepreneur. Well, I'm an entrepreneur, <laughs> not an entrepreneur, because like whatever those books say, I can't do it. Like the minute I leave my organizations and I'm not there, People do it on their own. You know, like I could leave for a few days and people the next thing you know is like they got T-Town Roofing and Gutters started, you know, and it might even be my dad, <laughs> you know, and yeah. I'm like, all right, thanks, dad. Appreciate that. Because, you know, me and my dad, like we did the roofs ourselves. Mm -hmm. And like I'd be like at five and six years old. So you were on the roof? On the roof. Okay. Turn off the shingles. So the did you grow up hating the work? 
Dude, I hated not getting paid. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's what I hated. You know, I didn't mind. You're doing saying, the work for free for dad. Well, like you know, I was like, when you're a business owner, you're the last person to get paid, mm -hmm. and that's what we were. We were business owners, and so like at the end of the day, we owed more in material bills. Payroll was every Friday, and we just we never had enough money to pay ourselves. And I actually, you know, because when my dad was in control of the company, we did siding, windows, carports, patio covers, gutters, and roofing, and. When I took the business over, I was like, the only thing we make money on is roofs. The only thing people don't bellyache and cry and do the work about is roofs. Like everybody else, you know, who doesn't do roofs, you know, is all they do is cry. They don't show up to work. They're drinking beers at 7 o'clock in the morning. And, you know, it's like that's that's just what it was. And so I actually paid somebody to steal our siding break. And, you yeah. know, like, 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 I, like I, I didn't tell my dad till years later, but I just like I paid someone to take that equipment. That's I'm funny. like, Dad, we don't have it anymore. You know, and like from from five years old, but really at like fourteen years old, I started knocking on doors, taking trailers to the dump. You know, and these were old trucks. Mm -hmm. Like these were trucks, like that, like you had to get a running start going up the hill to the dump. Right. You know what I mean? Because if you didn't hit the, if you didn't hit it hard enough, you was sliding back down, and you will learn how to back a trailer, my friend. <laughs> because it's like here's there, the cliff is over there, and you're driving this old ass trailer, and you're like, man, I needed more space to get up that hill. <laughs> You know, and, and in 2001... The my, skills that pay the bills. In 2001, my dad fell off a roof and broke his back. Oh, man, sorry to hear that. Me too, at the time. I was very sorry to hear that. But what I started doing is I bought our first brand new truck. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I hired someone. I was paying $50,000 a year to, you know, which was ludicrous at this time. And I didn't know how the hell I was going to pay them. But I knew I had three weeks to figure it out because you're a week behind, bitch. <laughs> you know, and like, you only get paid every two weeks. And I started hiring really smart people. And I, I begin this journey of like not being the smartest guy in the room and not having all the answers and not having to come up with the answer to the problem, but just, you know, just be there and be the facilitator of success. And so I think that really began my journey of just like, you know what, like finding someone that's smarter than you that's been there, that's done that. And so you don't have to like, you know, feel the pain from having the success because we could either feel the pain from having the sex or have the, the sex, not the sex. <laughs> feel you the pain, feel watch out, dog. <laughs> yeah, hey. you can have some pain from having sex. You definitely yeah, can. Yeah, you definitely can. But let's not go there. <laughs> so look, man, so the pain about being an entrepreneur is, um, you know, sometimes, you know, you, you get so focused on the good things that you don't, you don't take care of business. And the discipline is where you equal freedom. And me and you, like I can tell as free going people, you know, a lot of contractors relate because they're outliers, renegades, guys that sit at the back of the class and, and draw on a piece of paper or slept during class or you know, had a problem with authority. You know, I don't like cops. You know, I mean, I, I, I love cops, love, love cops, but I don't like them when they stop me or fuck with me. OK, <laughs> I mean, that's just the bottom line. So. You know, when it comes down to it, you know, you, you have to realize that if you want this freedom, that there has to be a system, a fundamental system. And as a second generation roofer, my, 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 my dad, he built a software that has a system. But my uncle, he was the guy that was really, really disciplined to the, uh, to the fundamentals of how it all worked. And I saw how he held people accountable. And so what you're talking about is when you leave, you know, the company not working as much as it could, you know, after about... 13 years, people quitting the business, things working, you know, it's got to a point now where I have a leadership team. I have the right, you know, what I call balancing. If you have the right marketing, if you create uh, the leads, if you create uh, a, an exciting business opportunity that top performers always want to come to work for you, then everybody understands it's a next man up mentality and that everyone is replaceable. And it does keep everyone honest to some extent. Because when one person knows that they're the most valuable person inside of your organization, then that's leverage. And and someone can't help but kind of get into that stinking thinking. I mean, it's human nature, you know? And so, you know, now I, I would say the reason why my company runs, you know, 90% while, while I focus on helping other contractors is because I still am... 100% focus on the marketing systems. The marketing systems generate the leads and the marketing systems generate the recruits. And uh, the biggest reason uh, for this freedom has been, you know, sharpening up my message, sharpening up my ability to use video content and adding, like I could always sell at the doorstep, I could always sell on the kitchen table, but becoming a great salesperson and becoming a great sales copywriter, a great sales video creator, a great person selling from stage. They're all different styles of sales and it's a different skill set. So, 
you know, if you're a contractor, sales cures all woes. Building a winning sales team, that will allow you to have a business that creates new revenue without you trading your time. But then you have to manage the expense. Then you have to maximize profits. Then you have to be disciplined to a system. So the sales is the front end, but without the back end, it all falls apart. It's a race car that has a broken rear axle. And you can, you know, go hard right into the to the right wall and hit that Ricky Bobby. Oh, hit that Ricky Bobby, man. You, you come on, man. You get it. You do the dance out there on the tarmac. Who's seen the movie where he's, oh, let's get to, get to Tom Cruise and a, and a ghost and a witch. Well, what it is is think about it. Like when you don't have the system, you get paranoid. You think your salespeople are doing things that they're not doing. You you don't know how much money you're making. You you know you 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 you, you know you just really live in a state of uh, anxiety and fear and scarcity. And you know how when you feel like the world is scarce, guess what reality you're creating. Because there's a doctor. His name's Doctor Joe Dispenza. I gotta check him out. He says basically say his name again. Doctor Doctor Joe Dispenza, and and he believes that your your thoughts are an extension of your mind, and they put out a certain amount of um, he calls it the the quantum force, and 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 that's one half of the equation. The other, almost stronger half of the equation, is the feelings that are associated with those thoughts. And so whenever you own like for me, I, I want to own um, a big boat, a big plane, I'll a say big house. I'll let you have mine big right apartments. now. Like, come on, Lee. You yeah, you we, we're going to be doing a partnership <laughs> you, you, on your you, you, shit. Okay? You can have it. You can have it. You, okay, but m m my point is, is that whenever I'm doing my meditation or whenever I'm, you know, in visualization, when I'm working out or running or whatever, you know, I try to give myself goosebumps from living in my future. And I try to feel what it's like when I have a billion dollar contracting company, when I have the kind of influence that's mass influence across, you know, the world, you know, and, and, you let know, me, let me touch on that note real quick, because one day my good friend Nasser Siddiqui told me, he said, one day, Ricky, you either will or will not meet the man that you want to become. He said, one day y'all will shake hands or one day you won't. You're like, do you want to meet that dude? If you want to meet him, you're gonna have to do what it takes to become him. Or if you want to be great, him. you gotta be fucking great. You gotta be fucking great all the time. All the time. It's hard out here for a roofer trying it's to get the money out here for that for rent. A pimp, isn't it? <laughs> it's hard out here for a roofer trying to get the money for that rent. Okay, you let know? me tell you something. All right. <laughs> uh, real recognize real, and um, you know that's what we're about in this community of contractors in this blue collar boardroom, we, we apply white collar business principles to a blue collar business to create financial freedom, whether it's modern sales systems or the ability to build a winning sales team. Absolutely. We, we are doing what, you know, the people that are the fastest growing businesses in America are doing, but we're doing it on a, you know, on a blue collar working class level. Right. And I want to remind you what's faster than Carl Lewis and that's 30 days. So before you sign up for something, remember that 30 days is coming around. <laughs> It's like granny coming around. What do you mean by that 30 days? Oh, 30 days. That's when like you think you could pay some bills, right? <laughs> you got net 30, car payments coming 30 days, rent coming 30 days, but 30 days, oh my God, it is so fast and it comes every 30 days and it never stops and those payments always come due and that rent is always due and 30 days is fast as they come. Well, there's a problem. There's 76% of America living paycheck to paycheck. There's an epidemic of people that are working too hard. They've been sold a lie that they could get a corporate uh, nine to five, get a 401k, have enough money, they could get a college degree. And it's bullshit. It's a scam. And people are, you know, all of us entrepreneurs. We have the secret, Lee. We do. We have the secret. We do. And that is, you know, guys, if you can learn how to influence without irritating people, if you can learn how to duplicate yourself, you can have anything you want in life. And 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 as a matter of fact, we got a guy in the next room. He's a baller. He's got a, a watch he put on his wrist, big, big ball and watch, okay? He's surprised the hell out of me. He sold multiple eight figures of roofs here in this market. Yes. Now, now, a lot of people listen to this like, man, okay, I want salespeople, but I want, you know, just a team of top guys, guys that I could count on to bring in seven figures, maybe even eight figures in business a year. And so uh, we're going to do a little interview with, with Jake and, and hear about how he sold 200 roofs. And I'm going to nominate Jake for this award called the Golden Door. And the Golden Door is an award for the top 0.1% of roofing salespeople. 
and uh, it's given away by my friend Sam Taggart. He has a conference called the Door to Door Con. I want you know you, both of y'all to come with me to this place in Salt Lake. It's in Salt Lake City. It's a conference for all door to door salespeople. And there's a lot of, of the Mormon community that are, are raised, sent out on a mission to knock doors, and they become professional door-to-door salespeople. And then there's all these other industries like uh, home security and solar and pest control that unite. And there's probably going to be, I don't know, 3,000 salespeople there. And there there will be a limited amount of roofers. And in order to get a Golden Door Award, you know what you have to do? You have to sell 200 roofs in a year. And, and so how do, tell me, how do you get a guy like Jake sell 200 roofs in a year for you? And how, how do you get that guy to, 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 to be successful? And, and, and what do you do uh, to attract these top performers? You call them 75 times. Ah, that's, what people 75 are scared, times. that's what people are scared to do right there. <laughs> you call them 75 times and you say, hey, life's better with Ricky. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you like, remind them. And, uh, you know, like, I remember, like, when I met Jake, like, Jake bought me a bunch of drinks, and Jake was, uh, Jake was, Jake, Jake was doing all the toast. roofs, Jake was doing all the roofs in my neighborhood. You know, I'm living in this neighborhood. There's some humble pie. Hey, he did, he did, a like, an $80,000 roof Woo. next door to a house that I owned at the time, and I thought, these, mo- these guys are my friends. If they need a roof, they're going to call me. Well, I should have knocked on their door. <laughs> and so, like, Jake became very sexy to me, and, like, when he, when my, he punched my, you in the face. When he punched me in the dick. Okay. And I like my sales manager in Tulsa actually quit his job when he found out Jake was working for us or with us. But when he came to Tulsa, he was like, You're gonna be you're gonna be you're gonna be with him? Like he stole all my jobs and I was like, Listen, dude, like he obviously Jake doing something never, right. Like, like Jake would have never stole one of my jobs. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. if you did something wrong, like You didn't close him. You didn't close him. I was like, I want to meet a Jake. I yeah. think I think it'd be a little cooler if So Jake talk to me around. about like we're gonna get into Jake's day, but what do you think separates him? As a top performer, what do you think that is? It a, is it a, is a skill set? Is it a mindset? Is it a is it dude? It's being fully present. It's being where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there. Not not letting your circumstances dominate you, but being put in the game and knowing what your part is. And this is where you have to be to win. And where does a roof sales guy win at the door, right? And at so, the fucking door. At the fucking door. And so when you have a guy who knows what his job is, he's in his fucking zone. He's not trying to do all this other shit. He's not trying to fucking be little Bo Peep, feed all the fucking sheep. He's fucking in the neighborhoods, at the fucking door. My name is Jake. I'm rich for fucking forever. You know, but that, that's how they do it. They're where they're supposed to be, when they're supposed to be there, till they're supposed to be home. Yeah, Jake's got a jacked up truck. He's got a Lambo. He's got a $25,000 watch. It pays to be he earned uh, it. a hard working, he earned it. door knocking contractor. Now, if but you're, everybody else wants to be talking about, like, give me some fucking accolades, like me on Instagram, like, whatever it is. But it's like in the neighborhood, parking the truck, getting out of the truck. Hi, Miss Susie. Well, it's funny. We, we, I, I brought my friend here, Jay, who's running this podcast into the neighborhood yesterday. I held a sales contest and we spent two hours knocking doors and we got four deals. And he looked at me and he said, are you fucking kidding me? He's like, how much do these roofs pay? And I'm like, well, some of them were shingle roofs. They weren't all tile roofs. I'm like, about 30 grand between all four of them. He goes, you're telling me you can make fucking $30,000 in two hours. Why the fuck? Why, why, why don't you do this every week? And, you know, it... it Cause it's, woo, got himself. Because it's hard. That's why. That's why. It's hard, it's hard to, to... To knock on doors every single day is the most mine... It's a mind fuck. It's a mind fuck because it's like you never know what you're going to get. You never know where you're going to be. But if you can overcome the bitch, if you can overcome whatever it is that you think that you should not be doing that, your future is whatever you want it to be. So that brings us to uh, the collaboration. And so I want to make an announcement here for anybody listening to this. Um, after the Seven Figure Contractor Mastermind, Ricky took Harvey Cohen, uh, Justin, Connor, Justin Dan out of Colorado, Connor, some of the different people from the Sky Diamonds family out on his 71-foot. favorite foot. people from the family. Yeah, he, he, he took them out on his 71-foot yacht. It looks a lot like the yacht that's behind me on, on this picture. It says, work harder. And uh, it's a multi-million dollar boat. And, uh, you know, I had an idea. And... The idea was that, you know, we would do a mastermind that we would hand pick about 10 people. Can I talk about that day for one second before yeah. you do that? Like, like talk every, about it. Ev- everybody's got something to say about Lee. Mm-hmm. They do, and it's cool. And like, you can listen to him, you can not listen to him. But the people that are the closest to him love him hard. 
and you can tell when people love you hard, you've done something to change their life. And the people around you, Lee, they love you, man. Oh, thanks, man. They do. And it's like the way they talk about you and the way they lift you up. It's pretty impressive, dude. And it's like a lot of people don't have that. And you you really ought to step back and step. And I'm not be trying grateful. to tell you what no, to do. No, you're telling me because I like, need, need to be grateful. You need to step back. and you just no, need, be grateful. You need, you need Thank look, you to everybody that's on my you team. Need, you need to look outside and see how much those people love you and how they adore you and how they they just they, they know who you are. Lee. They've seen you in your underwear. <laughs> you know what I mean? They know Cheers. who you are. And and they still decide to love you because that are the things in my that I find that you can't replace because I've had boats and I've lost my boats. I've had cars and I have to sell my cars. Like, Ricky, what happened to your Viper? Payroll. Ricky, what happened to your Hummer? Payroll. Ricky, what happened to that? Payroll. You know, so it's like when, like, for me, for stuff is not that important, but when someone loves you and, like, and you get around people to, and you see the love, it's like, man, I want to get in that family and I want to stay there. Now, I want to ask you a question, okay? What's the most expensive expense you have in your life? Like, you just you, you you touched on expensive one payroll. My boat, hands down. Your boat. My boat. And nobody understands it. My accounts don't understand it, but like I like it. It makes me smile. And it doesn't make sense on paper and it doesn't have to. <laughs> and it just is a it's the biggest it's the I almost changed my boat's name to Bruce Lee because it was whooping my ass. Ah! But but I just what I the, rose to the occasion. So what 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 is the goal? What is, what is your your real income with a bag full of money behind you? Take a look at it, okay? Just look at that. Look at that bag full of money. Inside of that bag has the perfect amount of money. How much money is in that bag for you? For you, Ricky? All of it. <laughs> How much? <laughs> All of it. So the, one time somebody asked me, they said, "Ricky, would you rather have a million dollars or a million friends?" And I said. I'd rather have a million friends that all give me two dollars. There you, you go. You know, and I'm, if the only way I'm putting the person in the bag is if I'm burying them, and so I don't want to kill none of my friends. But I never, I never woke up chasing dollars. Mm -hmm. And I think when you ch start chasing dollars and when you start making mistakes, you start taking shortcuts. You start like not taking off the second layer of felt paper. Mm -hmm. You know, like because it's gonna come off in little bitty pieces and it's gonna be really fucking hard. But then there's rotten wood underneath that felt paper and that homeowner crawled into their attic and you know they seen that little bit of rotten wood and okay, you, and okay you thought you were doing i don't do it double, for the money you I, thought you were double take so it's like I, I think like money is a byproduct of serving well and but with money we can serve more people absolutely we, we can have put, to be selfish we, we, we could put i don't i don't have, like my, my favorite part about life is being around people that love me and money is a byproduct of that like you got to have money so people will love you but I don't know that, man. People, but money doesn't buy happiness, but it sure does make it a lot easier. A car salesman asked me the other day, he goes, what's the most important thing to you in a car? I said, who's sitting next to me? Yeah. He said, okay, what's the second thing? I said, the radio. <laughs> so the point I was making, okay, let's say that your number was $100 million, because me and you got similar goals, and with $100 million, hey, when I was you in high just, school, you When I was in high school, I said, if boat. I can make $100,000 a year, I'll be so happy. Okay, well, now it's $100 million. And, <laughs> and so you want a $100 million check, or let's say you want a $50 million check, okay? You know, for me, I would take a ten million dollar one right now. Okay, so give ten, me ten. Give, give me 10, ten million. Okay, give you ten million. That, that's a that's a fair number. After I pay everything, well, because Jim Carrey wrote himself a, self a check for ten million dollars, and he did it too, right? And he and it in the movie Dumb and Dumber, he got uh, that's how it materialized. He wrote himself a check, he put it in his wallet, he looked at it every day, and whenever he did the movie Dumb and Dumber, he actually was paid ten million dollars. And so, um, you know, that's that's an example of visualization and making your thoughts and feelings a reality, but. The biggest expense that I have that you have are, are you know, the skills that got you out of Egypt aren't going to get you the promised land. Yeah, no. So the skills that got you to build a $10 million business, the skills that got you to, how much did you do here in Naples? Like built or sold? Just sold. Hmm. $40 million I like in stay sales. under the radar, Lee. Okay, so he's he's got... <laughs> I know because he's here. I see him in the neighborhoods. He's got close to forty million dollars in sales. We're gonna talk with Jake. Jake sold twenty million dollars in his by himself. Thirty of it. He's sold thirty of it. So seventy five percent. Incredibly efficient. Incredibly big numbers. Okay, but you know the truth is the skills that are gonna get you that ten million dollar check where you put ten million dollars in the bank. You may have to be a better marketer. You may have to be a better leader. You may have to be a better salesperson. I might find. I might need to find someone else who loves Ricky. Yeah, and I, I always, I'm always gonna take it back to the love for you because, like, with me, it's like, and I know you say you believe in God too, mm -hmm. and so do I. And it's like, like, and this was this just became like so real to me the other day. They said Jesus, like, what is? And I'm not super, I'm not super religious, not at all. 
but it said Jesus. Like, what's the, out of all the commandments, what's the greatest? He said, first of all, love God with all your heart and with all your mind, with all your soul. Second of all, love Amen. your neighbor as you love yourself. Check it out. You get to choose your neighbor, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you get to choose your neighbor. So, like, you don't have to love everybody. You just have to love who you're around. And, like, you don't have to live on 3708 Mallard Drive in Dell City, Oklahoma, where I grew up. You can live in Naples, Florida. And people in Naples, Florida are way easier to love. Bro, I grew up on Mallard Way. No way. I swear to God. Shut your face. I swear to God. I Shut grew up face, on 1104 dude. Mallard Way, Granberry, right Texas. Shut up, dude. And I'm telling you that that I, I spend a lot of money, my own money, $12,000 a month currently, on personal development. And so it's, it's worth it, Lee. I'm looking at you right now, and I'm like, this guy's got it going on. Well, I didn't know Good how job, to do Lee. all this shit. I had to pay <laughs> someone else who'd already done all this shit to teach me how to do this shit, how to be a better marketer, how to be a fucking leader. I, I discipline's not something that I fucking. I'm the guy who was arrested in high school and barely graduated. Well, here's the thing, like. I didn't get arrested because everyone liked me. Okay. <laughs> well, and, I'll, and tell the, what, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you I got arrested on a green with a big old bag of green, and the, the cop brought me back home in handcuffs, and I'll never forget. When he knocked on the door, my mom came to the door. He rolled out this big old bag of weed, and he looked at me, and he looked at my mom, and she said, oh, my God, you son of a bitch. And my dad said, You yeah. stole my catnip. And my dad goes, here. He went, here, let me look at that. <laughs> let, me, let me look at that. Let me look at that. Let me look at that. But hey, like whatever you pay to learn what you learned, I'm telling you, it's worth it, man. I'm proud of you. And I don't know what the, if that means anything to you, but I'm sitting here today. No, it's a challenge. Like, it's a challenge too. It's it's if one man can do it, so can you. And so you know, uh, the the challenge is is like as contractors, I didn't go to college. Did you go to college, dude? Like, did you go one, to college? No, there's no sir. One time, this guy told me he said. Who's ever the contractors, the guys that couldn't afford to go to college? I exactly. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> what the fuck? Exactly. Like, why are you trying to I could afford break going to college, right but I didn't want to go to college, okay? Even though there was some hot ass women and there's some good ass parties, the parties were too good and the women were too hot and I failed out quick, okay? When I got out of high school, I tried to join the army and it's like, Ricky, we're sorry. You're already all you can be. <laughs> you know, like, and I'm like, I'm like, all right. Well, and then I tried to go to college. I went for two days and I looked at these people. I'm like, I don't want to be like you. Well, I talked to a lot of contractors, so I got a perspective, and I know that most of them haven't paid for personal development. And I'm going to challenge you by listening to this: that 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 wants 71 foot yachts, that wants 40 million in sales. These these are the things that Ricky was able to do. With I, I have over a half million dollars in personal development. Yeah, and half so, million, and it's worth every penny. And so the the I just saw you doing Toastmasters. That stuff's not free, and but that's the cheapest thing I ever did. Is it really the cheapest do you, thing? Do you I ever have anybody? Did. What do you? A lot of people think about Toastmasters. You just went through it. Tell us what it is and, and what your experience is and how you, what you say about it. Listen, if, if you want to learn how to speak in front of people and you want to be around a lot of people that want to grow, mm -hmm. which are cool people, that's what Toastmasters is. It's like if, but if you're going to be in Toastmasters, get involved. Like Say something. Do something. Give your speeches because it's not a place to get judged. It's a place to grow. And where, do you, where else do you go that you can pay $30 a month to? And, like, there's all these people who are tax attorneys and private investigators, and they just they might want to talk in front of a crowd one day, like, which Lee has mastered. But you learn those skills in Toastmasters, and you will never get one opportunity. more. You, you won't get a second chance to give a first impression. And if you get the microphone once and you blow it, you will, you will never get it again. But if you go to Toastmasters and somebody gives you the microphone, you're like, boom, this toast is for me, this toast is for you. It's like you're ready. And so don't ever waste an opportunity to get ready because that's where lives are changed. That's where you change lives. And down set hut. Down set hut. Here we go. So here, <laughs> here go. comes the plug. I mean, we waited all episode. And so Ricky's got a 71-foot yacht. He took out the team at the Seven Figure Contractor Mastermind. We've agreed to do a collaboration. We're going to take a limited amount of people out on the waters, we're going to go sailing. We're going to talk modern sales systems, creating videos, using automated marketing systems, going after commercial jobs. We're going to talk about recruiting sales teams, speaking from stage, closing in the home, closing at the doors. You're going to hear from people like Jake, who has closed 200 roofs in one year. And, you know, we're going to only have room for a few people, and it's going to go down for real. And you're going to have to pay the cost to be the boss. Hey, and it comes due every day. Every day. He was telling me his bills on this on this yacht here, man. So so we decided to make a little chain exchange. And so, you know, I'm going to be helping Ricky with his uh, modern sales systems. I'm going to be helping him with his marketing and, and, and some of the, the gross systems that he needs to, 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 to have more time. Because if there's one thing that contractors can't get, it's more time. time. 
Time's so the most Operation valuable. Keep a Yacht. Operation Keep a Yacht, baby. <laughs> Operation Keep a Yacht. Mm. So, so um, you know, we're actually going to be using some of the same things we use for contractors and and getting some charters booked for his yacht. So, what we want you to know is, <coughs> woo, damn, it's cold season out Your there. Your gift will make room for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna make room for you, but 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 it's going down for real. And uh, we're probably gonna make a little trip across the sea. We're probably gonna go to Bimini. We're gonna go check out a. Uh, um, we're gonna get a high end like uh, a mansion. Ricky's got a place he's he stayed at before, and you know, tell us about what it's like over there on Bimini on one of these in these big old houses. Ooh, well, with me or without me? With you, <laughs> because of course, if, you're gonna be there. You're yeah, gonna be coaching yeah, people. Yeah, if you're with me, it's it's gonna be the lifetime experience you never had. It's gonna be like people waiting on you hand and foot. Bringing you conch out of the sea, making you conch soup, looking at the stars and just wondering if they'll name one after you. I mean, it's life changing. Like once you once you get out in the open sea and once you get out and you find out like you're not as cool as you think you are and you can't run as long as you think you can run. That you're just a jag. Like I got like above my mirror, I got just jag, just another guy, just another guy, just another guy. And then down below it says, "You better do something about it." And I, and I look at that and I look at that every single day, and I'm going to do something about it, Lee, and I know you are too. That's right, and we we want you to do something about it. So, look, if you enjoyed this podcast and you're a contractor who wants more leads, more recruits, more revenue, and more time, keep coming back, share the podcast with your friends, and hit us up, man, because we're, we're, we're going to be taking a limited amount of people out on Ricky's yacht, and we're going to be having fun together, man. This is an epic partnership, man. Cheers. He brought his vodka in. I don't ever do this, but toast to the Roofing Revolution and Sky Absolutely. Diamonds University partnership, man. Absolutely. All right, man. No it's been, roof left it's, behind. It's been a great episode of the Blue Collar Boardroom. Thanks a lot for coming. Really appreciate you, buddy. Absolutely. My pleasure. There you go, man. There you go, dog.